Hello everyone, this is Freedom Master Victor Neustroyev. Thank you for joining our today's webinar. The topic is uh, Knight versus Bishop. So we are going to learn how to play with a Knight uh, against Bishop. Uh, we will learn it through the examples of three different games. And the first game that we are going to start is the game played by Bobby Fischer. This is a kind of a classical game. Can you please uh, tell me if you can hear me well and actually what country are you from? Okay, so we are waiting for more people to come. Now there are only six attendees. Okay, perfect. Hi, Anusha. And uh, one more thing that I want to tell you before we start the webinar. Oh, first, I highly recommend you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I uh, publish every, I publish a new video every week, for example. That was uh, one of really good videos that I liked about top seven aggressive chess openings. It's really good, and uh, I really um, play some of these openings in my Blitz games, sometimes in classical games. Uh, if you watch this video, you can at least learn Sicilian defense or Kelly variation, which is a quite a strong opening for Black. Black can overtake the initiative starting from the first move. Okay, and today I think there will be another uh, video about uh, typical mistakes that chess players make in their games and of course how to avoid them so if you subscribe you won't miss it okay this second thing i want you to remember so all the webinars that i conduct on sundays are free but if you want to support this is the link you can do it on patreon um, slash tricks of chess here you click become a patron and you can donate any amount that you can and all you want so and so one more thing this is my profile on um, chess.com if you have an account on chess.com i also recommend you subscribe to uh, not to miss any announcement that i am going to do uh, and uh, in our tricks of chess group on chess.com we are going to run a tournament so um, maybe it's not every uh, knows that uh, starting from the next week we are going to conduct an online chess tournament with seven rounds uh one game per week so a classical tournament the time control will be uh 45 minutes plus 30 seconds increment per move so one game per week so your task is to no oh, i'll do the pairings your task is to negotiate with your opponent and schedule the game and then play it then you tell me the result, uh, give me the link to the game. Uh, you can play it on chess.com or Lee Chess. I'll uh, check it for cheating. If everything is OK, then I'll put this uh, result into the table and do the next pairings. Uh, so today is the last day to register. So for those uh, those who didn't register uh, but really want to participate, so today is the last day. You can do it after the webinar. And uh, I'll just provide you with the link here. OK, so to register, you should um, submit the form. I just sent the link to Google Forms. No, actually, this is the link. Oh, you, you'll see it here. It's easy uh, to submit. Um, I just ask you about your uh, nickname, uh, your ratings on chess.com, Lee Chess. Oh, of course, if you're ready to play seven weeks. Okay, fine. Okay, let's close it. Okay. Let's start with our webinar. So it looks like we have seven participants right now. Okay, perfect. So uh, what we are going to start with, we are going to start with the game uh, played by Bobby Fischer and Julio Balbachan. So um, it's uh, why it's black to move in this position and black played this move. But before we start analyzing, 
can you please tell me in what cases knight can be better than a bishop you know um, there was a webinar where we decided how to play with a bishop parent against a bishop parent of course we discussed all these cases can you please uh, remind me Okay, so knights can be better when there is when in the position is tactical. So there are tactics. Okay. And when the bishops are bad, that's right. And knight is better in closed position, it's true. Especially if there is an outpost. Right. Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's just okay, yeah, uh, we will wait for what uh, Anusha is going to tell us. Okay, le let's sum it up. So, of course, we compare if uh, the knight is better than the bishop, if the knight has more options, that's true. But a uh, knight can be much better if it can find a strong point uh, or an outpost in the center. And then none of the enemy pieces can attack or chase this knight standing in the center. So in such cases, the knight is better than the bishop. Uh, also, when we are playing on the one side, for example, there are no pawns on one side and uh, like on the queen side, there are only pawns on the king side. If so, yes, knight can be better because uh, usually bishop is better than a knight because of uh, his long reach. But um, when you don't really have to move your pieces from one side of the board to the other one, knight is better because knight, uh, knight can make... Uh, many different maneuvers and uh, can attack more weaknesses and occupy more squares while the bishop only occupies the squares of uh, the diagonal where it stays uh, what is more important no maybe not more important but what is also important uh, it's that knight together with a queen can uh, create more different combinations so Usually, queen and knight is better than a bishop and queen. However, I have two good examples where I was playing with a bishop and queen against a knight and queen, and I won both these games. Uh, one was against an international master, but of course, I understood that my position was better because of uh, his king weakness. Okay, so Anusha knows this position. That's perfect. Okay, fine. So, uh, black played knight b6. This is a kind of a mistake. What can white do in this position? White has a typical idea that he can implement right now and uh, get the advantage. Yeah, that's right. So bishop takes b6, queen takes b6, and knight d5. And then this knight cannot be attacked with any pieces. Black can sacrifice the rook, but no. Then he absolutely loses the game. Queen d8. Okay, so now there are weaknesses on a6 and d6. Sorry. What do you think? How to continue? Does it make sense to capture on e7 and then gain the pawn on d6 with our queen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you about knight sacrifice on f6. That could make sense. However, uh, it should be a move that makes sense. For example, okay. Okay, okay. So, uh, the, for example, uh, knight f6, king h8. So, uh, 
one year and a half i was playing in a tournament in tunisia and um, there was a blitz game against international master and in a similar position in sicilian defense he played knight f6 after which i automatically played king h8 he spent about two minutes on uh, knight f6 calculation so what uh, can happen in case if i take this knight with a pawn and i just simply played king h8 to avoid all the complications because i understood that my position is already better and with knight f6 he didn't create any threats okay fine so yeah knight is seven uh, can uh, fall into a trap queen takes d6 and in this position rook d8 any rook to d8 so if queen moves the rook on d1 is hanging with a checkmate yeah right so th that's why it doesn't make sense to take even if you gain a pawn in this position white already has a better advantage uh rather than extra pawn so white position is much better and he plays f4 why he wants to focus on the king side to continue the attack while his knight supports uh, this attack and it's actually difficult for black to join his pieces to defend okay so what uh, black played in this position it takes a four of course because if not then f5 then f6 and so on so e takes f4 queen takes f4 queen d7 what do you think uh what next move can uh, uh white play so the rook on h3 is probably hanging okay good question why not f6 well, let's say f6 f6 now g takes f6 maybe or f5 first f5 then let's say f takes g5 knight is seven queen is seven h takes g5 i think it's just a one-way road so rook h1 or queen h2 and the pawn dies g6 is gonna be played yeah that, that f6 is too risky it's better it's better for black to take on f4 and this is what he did queen takes on f4 queen d7 so how to play for white what do you think Queen f6, a queen f3. Ah, no, well, queen f6 doesn't work. Well, queen f6, he just takes with the pawn. Queen f6, he takes with the pawn. And then uh, what? Knight f6. No, there is a bishop here. There is no checkmate. Um, so queen f3 um, is too passive. And uh, Fisher plays queen f5. Why? Because it's a move with a tempo if here a uh, knight uh, queen takes on uh, f5 then knight takes a seven gaining a piece it's a fork and then he takes the queen back ah queen f5 exchange the queens okay perfect all right so queen f5 was played rook cd8 to protect the queen rook a3 so this is a weakness the queen uh, queen on f5 can't be taken because then knight is seven white will be one piece up so now white attacks the pawn on a6 here maybe it's better to sacrifice this pawn but he plays queen a7 now knight is seven and uh, white can capture the pawn i believe many of you would play this move and it's actually not a mistake this is one of the way to exploit the advantage but instead fisher decides to continue the attack he plays rook c3 threatening with rook c7 g6 the queen is hanging queen g4 queen uh not rook d7 but queen d7 now now the queen is hanging queen f3 queen e6 rook c7 attacking the mm, this uh, bishop then rook rook d goes to e8 to protect it knight f4 queen goes to e5 
uh, rook d5, queen goes to h8. G7 is another possible square, but uh, now the queen is trapped in the corner. Here, white definitely dominates. At least he may uh, capture the pawn on e6 with uh, many moves, including uh, rook c6, queen a3, maybe rook a7, anything. No, I think rook c6 is the best one. But he plays a3 to create an escape square. Why does he play this move? The other reason is because uh, black ran out of good moves. He can't do anything to improve his position. And he understands that soon um, white uh, just will do something else to weaken the pawns, maybe to trade the material, or finally plays h5 to weaken the king. Or h5, h6, and the queen will be trapped forever. That's why he plays h6 himself. G takes h6, queen takes h6. Then h5. Now it's a question. So uh, no, in the game it was played bishop g5, but uh, what if he plays g5 with the pawn? What should we do? Where to play with our knight? What do you think? So knight e2, or, oh wait, knight h3 or knight g2? Yeah, so knight h3 doesn't seem to be a good move because what then? The pawn is protected, but knight uh, g2, knight a3, and knight g4 looks really good as well as knight f5. So knight g2, then f6, for example, then it goes to a3, rook f7, then uh, knight f5 is good, knight g4, looks good as well the pawn is not hanging because uh, knight f6 discovered the attack okay so g5 wasn't played in the game instead bishop g5 so now i want you to find what to do for uh, white in this position Knight h3, no. Okay, uh, hello Arnav, thank you for attending our webinar. So uh, we are uh, talking about knight versus bishop and this is the game example of um, how to play with a knight against bishop. Um, this is the game between Bobby Fischer and Julio Balbachan. Okay, so actually here the question is if we should move the knight somewhere or we may capture on g6 first or maybe it, does, it makes sense to capture on g6 with a knight. What do you think? Just tell me any suggestions that you have. Okay, so queen g4. Uh, okay, okay, so queen g4, but uh, queen g4, bishop takes f4. What's the idea? Okay. So knight h3, this is what Anusha suggests. And Annie Root said uh, not to capture on g6. Uh, with the pawn or with the knight? What, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Wait, how to stop it? So uh, uh, with the, this pawn or with a knight? What did you, with a pawn, okay, I got it. So actually, uh, the key um, the key answer is take with the pawn. Why? Because if then he takes on f4, g takes f7, 
Rook has to take, otherwise he loses a rook. Rook takes. Rook takes rook. King takes on f7. And then in this position, either rook h5 or rook f5 works. King e7 and then rook f4. Uh, we have one extra pawn, but uh, what is more important, the king is really weak and we are going to win this game. Uh, however, I think rook h5 is a better option. Rook h5 and he has almost no moves with his queen. I mean, uh, queen f6 cannot be played, then just rook f5. So what should he do? Queen g6 maybe. Queen g6, queen e4 check. Yeah, it's a winning position, of course. King has to go to the e file like this. If he goes here, then rook h6. But even in this position, we can play maybe rook g5 or rook f5. Oh, oh yeah, believe me, it's a winning position. So uh, that's why in this position he can't capture this knight. He has to take the pawn, and this is what he did. Now this is a pin. Knight on f4 is pinned. How to deal with it? Queen b3. Queen b3. So everyone agrees that queen b3 is a good move. Yeah, seems to be the only move. Uh, of course, it makes sense to sacrifice on g5, but uh, queen b3 is much better. Why? Because if now he takes on e4, we always have a discovered attack. Okay, in the game it was rook takes f4, and uh, then the black lost immediately. However, our task is also to analyze what happens if he captures with a bishop, or what if he moves the king. No, if bishop takes, it's easier, rook h5. If king gets eight, how to play? What do you think? Rook takes g5. Okay, I don't, I don't see. Uh, uh, so rook g5. Sorry, rook g5, and then he may capture on f4. How to deal with it? Queen h3 right now or what? So, okay, I, I, I show rook g5, then if queen takes g5, then uh, queen h3 looks good, because if king moves, it's a queen h7 checkmate. He can't really block this check, because uh, queen h5 is faced with uh, maybe knight h5, maybe knight g6, and then queen h5. So, but the problem is that he may capture on f4. Materially, this position is equal. Of course, I understand that the king is weak, but how to exploit this advantage? Okay, so yeah, rook g5 doesn't win immediately. Uh, knight, after king h8, knight takes on g6 as a winning move. So right, you're, you're right. So this is what uh, three, uh, th three participants suggested. So then uh, what to play? Queen takes, then rook g5, and if queen g5, it's queen uh, h3 with queen h7 checkmate. If he doesn't take, for example, what can he do? Oh, rook f1, king a2, queen g5 now. It doesn't really make much difference. Still queen h3, king g8. And it should be still a check, sorry, not rook h7. Uh, it should be a checkmate in this position. Am I right? So queen h7, he goes to f8, this is the only square, then queen h8. 
he has to block it. Ah, he blocks it with a check, so he doesn't have queen h6 option. Unfortunately, it's a check to our king, so that's why this line doesn't work. And here we just have to take on f1. But it's still a winning position. For example, what can he do? Rook f8, queen h3, still threatening with the same threat. Queen g6. Okay, just queen d3 for now. Oh, well, or rook c3. Yeah, rook c3 looks good. Rook c3 with the idea to use this file to gain a queen or to even checkmate the king. Okay, fine. So maybe it was better than rook f4. Uh, what else does he have here instead of moving the king or taking on f4? What other move he has? No, actually, it looks like no more moves in the game he took with the rook. And then uh, how do we win? Now checkmate is unavoidable. Rook e5. Oh, uh, rook g5 is a simple move. And of course, after this move, we have a winning position. But to checkmate, we should play rook e5. Absolutely correct. Uh, where does he go? If king goes to h8, then rook takes on e8. He has to block it. Then how would you continue in this position to threaten a checkmate? Queen f7, right. Yeah, queen f7. The rook is pinned. If he takes, it will be line mate. And he can't really protect this rook on f8 with anything. Okay, fine. So in the game, king went to f8, rook takes rook, king takes rook, and then we checkmate. Actually, queen e6 leads to checkmate, but queen g8 uh, that was recommended. Now, doesn't really matter what he blocks with. For example, if he blocks with a queen, then they play queen e6, he goes queen e7 or bishop e7, no, let's say bishop e7, and then rook c8 is a checkmate. No, if queen e7, it's the same thing. Or actually, queen e6 can be played immediately. I like this idea more because then just this move and the game is over. So he goes to d8, then queen c8. If he blocks, it's easy. Well, actually, he goes to f8 and queen c8. Uh, bishop blocks, queen takes bishop. The game is over. So let's sum it up. Let's go back. So I think that was a critical mistake by Black. So they played knight b6 and allowed uh, white to locate the knight on d5. After that, the position is strategically winning. And uh, here, of course, white can do many things, including attack on the queen side. But uh, it's much easier to attack on the king side while the pawns are already advanced. If he takes, queen takes, queen comes closer to the attack. Um, it's not easy how to win, but of course, uh, in the general, the overall idea is to push the pawns, maybe this, then somehow occupy the f6 square, or maybe instead to play g6 to open the h or f file. But in the game, uh, uh, here g6 was played by black, maybe another mistake, after which uh, we can play h5. And finally, when the queen was trapped in the corner, he had to play h6 himself, what opens the position and weakens his king. That was another decisive factor. Okay, fine. We are done with this game and uh, let me open a new one.
And uh, this is the game played between uh, Mikhail Botvinnik and Leonid Stein. Uh, they both were Soviet grandmasters. This game is a good example of how to restrict the bishop. Um, unfortunately, in the game, Botvinnik didn't. Uh, by in the end of the game, Botvinnik didn't play well, and uh, I'm not sure if he won it. Maybe even not. No, he didn't win this game, uh, but he could win. He did almost everything to win. Okay, so e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. So we play. I recommend my students to play bishop c4, Evans Gambit, or maybe uh, for um, stronger players, just slow Italian game where white tries to get a small advantage. Bishop b5. So this is how a typical um, Rui Lopez starts. Knight f6 leads to Berlin defense, but a6 is the main move. Bishop a4, knight f6. And uh, what people, uh, what move the, do people play usually in this position is white? Castle. Mm -hmm. Sure. Castle. So the pawn is not hanging. Then it depends on what they want. C3 usually is the, the classical variation or rook e1 c3. Some people prefer to play d3. And if I were playing this position, I would play c3 d3. First d3, then c3. Uh, now the pawn is not hanging because of d4 and then rook e1. But uh, for some reason, maybe it was a home preparation, uh, but Winnick decided to capture on c6. The move uh, is not so good because uh, it's totally unlogical. So he just spent the tempo on moving the bishop to a4 and then decides immediately to take on c6. Uh, so he lost the tempo using this tempo, black played knight f6, but looks like knight f6 is a good developing move for black in this position. Oh, oh, I understand. Maybe, maybe black decided that uh, in case of this trade, it's better for black to have a pawn on f6. While the knight is already on f6, the e5 can be a weakness. Maybe that was the idea that um, uh, Botvinnik had in his mind that time. So a bishop takes c6, d takes c6, the pawn is not hanging because it's no, if, for example, we take the knight queen d4 and uh, both this knight and pawn on e4 are hanging. So at least black is able to equalize, but I believe he can even get better position because uh, while the position is open, he can fully exploit the advantage of bishop pair. That's why d3 to protect, knight d7. So he applies this idea to protect the pawn on uh, e5. Uh, in all games, I also noticed that people play bishop d6 move. OK, knight d7, knight bd2, bishop e7, knight c4, threatening the pawn. Then well, f6 can be played, but maybe he decided not to weaken the diagonal. However, it looks like f6 is the best move in this position, then knight c5, bishop comes to e6, or maybe sometimes knight comes to e6 to control these two squares. Uh, so looks like there is no advantage for white, but maybe uh, Mikhail Botvinnik was uh, prepared better, or maybe he just wanted to get a, such a position where he can apply uh, all his uh, abilities to play the position strategically. Bishop f6, castle. Castle, and what do you think what should do? So here I want you to suggest a plan. Okay, bishop a3 to stop knight c5. That, of course, makes sense. 
Yeah, but I do, I'm not sure if uh, 95 can be played right now. The pawn is hanging. Pawn e5. So bishop e3, okay. Uh, of course, e3 is a good spot for the bishop, but I'm not sure that uh, we should play this move. Uh, bishop g5 is a blunder. Bishop g5, bishop takes bishop. Fianchetto, the dark squared bishop. So b3, bishop b2. Uh, looks good, but is too slow. Actually, now I see that according to the computer, b3 and bishop b2 is the best idea. Um, but Vinik played in a similar way, but he had something in his mind. As I told you, he played b4. Why? Because with this move, he wants to uh, restrict the black pawns on the queen side. Uh, it's a good question. Why does he play so and what should why do in this position? So you see uh, on this side uh, black has a pawn majority That can sometimes be converted to a passed pawn Usually uh, such formation when there are double pawns on the c6 on the c c6 and c7 cannot be converted to extra uh, Not to extra but to a passed pawn and uh, White does everything to stop it so, but b4 is a good move because now c5 cannot be played right now. Also, a4, bishop a3 is a good idea to use this diagonal. So this move not only helps to gain the space, but also tries to stop these pawns. So queen is that one, a4. And the pawn, of course, is not hanging. No, I'll show you. If queen takes, then bishop a3, the rook on f8 is hanging. So he plays rook e8. Now bishop a3. With the idea to push the pawn forward. So, for example, let's make a move like knight goes here, then we. I'm not sure that we should play b5 right now. Maybe we'd better keep this move in our mind. But uh, here is c5 looks strong. So maybe b5 is too early. But uh, this idea, this is one of the ideas of bishop a3 move, actually. b5. So black decided just to stop, to prevent any activity. And uh, if the pawn, on, the pawn on b5 blocks the b4 pawn, so it makes this bishop a bad piece. Sorry b5 so how to continue should we take or not or if if not then which move to play what do you think Ninety five. Ninety five to attack on C six. Okay, what other suggestions? Ninety three, ninety three. Actually, both moves can be playable. So I don't believe that b takes on a4 is a good move because it absolutely ruins the pawn structure and the pawn on a4 can be taken later with the queen, for example. But knight a5 was played to attack on c6. Queen d6. How to continue? No, d, d4, <laughs> sorry, but d4 again is a blunder. d4, e takes d4. He has just three, uh, he, he has three attackers while you have only two defenders. So d4 cannot be played. Uh, 
c4 yeah it's c4 move that's right so c4 right so if he takes then d takes c4 i can show you if he takes we take with the pawn the c6 is a weakness we trade the queens and uh, i think he's gonna lose at least one pawn that's why in this position he plays knight f8 decided not to take but c5 queen e6 and the queen has to stay there to uh, protect the pawn on c6 and at the same time he can't really develop these two pieces um, so we have the knight on the edge of the board but he has to stay with two pieces with a rook and a bishop on their initial position so that's why now it makes sense to switch to the other side at some point Rook e1, rook d8, queen c2 to avoid any complications on the d file. Uh, knight goes to g6 and then uh, bishop c1 because the bishop has nothing to do on a3. Uh, however, here the task is to stop the knight coming to f4. If, for example, we play another move, let's say rook a d1, then knight can come to f4. And if g3, then just queen g4, and we have some problems. Or even uh, queen h3 can be played. So it's definitely not in our favor. So that was a really important move. And bishop goes here, and if knight f4 now, then we just take, he takes, and then how do we play? Yeah, actually, uh, that's true. Why decided to close the position? So now this uh, this light squared bishop has to stay on c8. Our rook is hanging. How to play? Rook AD1. Uh, rook AD1 uh, looks like a reasonable move, but you allow the opponent to control these squares. So maybe Bishop D4 can be played. Maybe just G5 to start the king side attack. Uh, I think it was much better. Yeah, yeah. Like Walter suggested, E5, then D4, and this is how we restrict the dark squared bishop. While well, this one is already restricted. However, in the game, he didn't play a uh, knight f4 move. He decided just to trade on h4. Now he's threatened with queen g4. That's why here we have to trade. Bishop takes, and then bishop comes to b2. It has nothing to do on this diagonal. Rook e8 to support the pawn to be able to uh, use the queen to attack. So, for example, queen can now go to g6, maybe threaten on g2. And uh, the best idea here is to play f3 to protect on g2. But the problem is that this rook is hanging. That's why rook e2. Queen g6, f3. A perfect position. So bishop e6 cannot be played, just knight takes c6. Uh, rook e6 was played in the game. However, what if bishop d7? What can you say about this move? Uh, looks like that was a good move that uh, black could play. So how to continue for white? Can you suggest a plan? No, g3, uh, g3, uh, what for? Uh, this bishop on uh, h4 isn't hanging.
J3 and then Rook G2, you mean? Yes, but the bishop just retreats, and uh, what to do then? Actually, you have nothing to worry about. The, the rook on e2 protects on g2. That's why just uh, don't think about the king. Everything is okay. Think about what you can improve in this position and uh, how to attack the weaknesses of black position. Rook f1, what for? Because uh, to play f4, I think, is too risky. He has a bishop pair, and you open the position too much. Queen b3. All, almost queen b3. Uh, bishop c3. Then, for example, rook d8, queen b2 to attack on e5. No, uh, maybe let's take first. If he takes with the c pawn, then a6 becomes a weakness. If not, then uh, he gives us the file to penetrate. And then queen b2. Bishop goes. No, to play with the pawn, it looks like not a good idea because he just blocks the sixth rank, which is important if he wants to attack on the king side. So f6 isn't a good move. So bishop f6. Rook d1, queen h6, bishop d2, queen g6. Then we may use these squares. If he does this, then knight b7, knight d6 looks good. Bishop e3 first, then knight b7, knight d6. So I can't say that white is winning, but white is slightly better in this position. Okay, that was a good question. What if he takes with the a pawn? Maybe knight b7, I think. Maybe knight b7 first to be able to play with a rook. Uh, this rook has to play, and then rook a7. For example, uh, rook can't move to a8, because in such a case we trade and just capture the e5 pawn. So rook b8, rook goes here, and then we put the pressure here and uh, just move the knight back to a5. Okay, fine. In the game, it was rook e6 instead of bishop d7. So uh, the idea is simple. He wants to protect e6 with c6 with his rook. And uh, the second idea is that in some variations, he can join the rook to g6 to attack our king. Bishop c3, queen h5. Queen b2. Not a good choice. I think here, while his pieces are not developed. No, actually, you see, there, there is a kind of a paradox. Uh, we uh, play against the bishop pair, but it's better in this position to open it by playing d4. Why? Why we do so? Because it opens the d-file and it's in the favor of the side who is better developed. And of course, it's obvious that uh, while these pieces are located on their initial positions, uh, white is developed much better. White can get the control over the d-file and maybe somehow penetrate there. Well, anyway, white is better. Of course, it's not winning. And actually, if he doesn't take, maybe then we can do this. So queen b2 was played, a kind of inaccuracy. Rook g6 cannot be played right now. The pawn is hanging. Uh, he plays bishop g5. And if we now capture, who knows what can happen. Rook h6? No, no, guys, it's easy. 
rook takes e5 queen takes e5 and bishop e3 check so this is a discovery attack that's why the pawn is hanging so there was a question what if in this position instead of uh, queen b2 d4 is played and then we played d5 he takes yes it's and double the pawns but it makes this pawn weakness and can uh, help us to create a passed pawn on the d file or maybe we'll play c6 and then somehow queen c5 attacking this pawn so d5 uh, when we push the pawn uh, that is connected to the other pawn to the fifth and sixth rank it usually provides us uh, some advantage space advantage and uh, some threats in uh, some variations and it's even stronger when we make this move with a temper okay so queen b2 bishop g5 the pawn is not hanging rook f1 bishop f4 he's threatening this um check checkmate i think yeah mm, i'm not sure if it's checkmate no it's not checkmate it's check what should we do h3 or g3 uh, g3 or g6 i think Yeah, g4 here g4 is much better it's a move with a tempo and this is what was played in the game as for h3 then rook g6 and he's threatening to take on h h3 now if king moves then bishop takes h3 well king king f2 is a better idea because queen h4 just and king has to retreat and then bishop h3 or queen h3 i think queen h3 So that's why h3 is a bad move. g4, queen h3, bishop d2, rooks go. So bishop f4, e takes f4, uh, rook g2, So, uh, yeah, rook g2, he wants to play uh, queen e5, and maybe queen e5 was a better, op not, not here. Rook g2 is fine, because if we do queen e5 right now, sorry, if we do queen e5 right now, then I think he can just sacrifice here. And if we take, then uh, our position is losing, because this move is faced with... Rook g2... Rook takes it two, king takes it two. Queen e3, king d1. Yes, and then if he goes back, we check him. King goes here, rook d8 with a checkmate. I'll show you. Rook d2. King c1. Then rook h2. Queen uh, d3, and then we go here. So if instead of king c1 in this position, he plays king b1, then uh, queen d3, queen f1 comes immediately. So uh, queen e5 cannot be played because of bishop g4. Oh, I, let's let's show again, because uh, we didn't cover this line. Uh, if king goes to the corner, then just queen f1. Yeah, so bishop uh, can be sacrificed. So uh, what can I say about this option? So even if your position is really bad, you can always hope for a tactical strike that can at least save your position or even help you to win. That's why uh, your calculation ability is no, the key factor and uh, the key ability that you should try to improve. That's why puzzles are so important. So the ability to play strategically is important too, but even if the position is uh, bad and you don't understand, if you calculate better than your opponent, you are likely to win. So rook g2, rook g2 now, then uh, h5 here could make sense.
Uh, actually, that was what was played in the game. Uh, so queen e5. We're taking two pawns. H takes g4, uh, and then queen takes f4. Then uh, he took here. So actually, I think that at some point it was better for white to capture on b5 first. Because now he takes, yes, he ruins the pawn structure, but in some variation he has a passed pawn. And in this position, uh, white played a strategical mistake. He could play a better move. What do you think? Not, not strategical. I think it, that was a tactical mistake. Here he played uh, rook g3. And then I think the game ended in a draw. Yeah, so what do you think? What was a better option for uh, white in this position? Oh, we, we will discuss rook g3, of course, but um, what what uh, is there a better move? For white, what can you see? Okay, so uh, looks like no suggestions. So let's just calculate everything. So for example, here, f takes g4. F takes g4, uh, what can we do? Uh, rook f6, of course, the first thing that comes to my mind. But maybe this is better. Queen f7, king h7. It looks fine because looks like everything is protected if he does this move with the idea to play rook h3 uh, then queen d4 check at least first if king moves to the corner then queen e4 i think uh, black is winning uh, so probably queen f2 should be played queen f2 rook f2 bishop takes g4 So as for the number of pawns, black is one pawn up, but maybe knight c6 can work here. Then, then rook e8, this is a weakness. And he can't really do anything to protect the e4 pawn. So black is better here. That's why uh, f takes g4 doesn't work. What else? Knight c4, no, knight c4. He takes on f3. Uh, no, let's analyze rook g3. The move that happened in the game. Rook g3, then g takes f3. The queen is not hanging. And then if rook g6, then f takes g6, rook takes f3. Queen g4, check. He trades. Then he plays rook g3. Sorry, not this move. Rook g3, bishop h5, knight takes c6, but a3, this is the main problem. Now, a3 looks fine because then rook goes after the pawn. a3 can be played later, but uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe bishop b1. I think the position is equal. Why? Because if he takes here on g6, then uh, maybe bishop c2 and uh, then these two pawns can be taken or a3 a2 can be played if not rook g6 but uh, rook takes on f3 rook g3 rook g3 in h5 knight c6 a3 and when queen tries to stop it then just king f8 to stop this night activity.
So, and then I think uh, Pocket shall check and Black draws the game. Okay, Queen G2 checkmate when? It's not a checkmate, so. Queen G2, Rook takes G2. Rook takes uh, on G2, King goes to H1. After Rook G6, okay. Rook G6, F takes G6. No, Queen G2 is not checkmate. And on the next move, Rook F3, so the pawn is taken, no checkmate. Uh, but if Queen F3 here, then a rook g3, queen g3, sorry, queen g3, queen takes g3, h takes g3. Again, the position is equal. Uh, so it was better to play queen takes c7 instead of rook g3 in this position. Why? Because if now he takes, we take on g6, f takes on g6, the queen goes back to g3, let's say he trades, then bishop g4 doesn't make sense he loses on c6 if bishop d7 then uh, we take on f3 and this position is uh, better than what we got previously because here these all the pawns are bad so the material is equal but pawns are bad and white is slightly better in this position it's uh, i can't say it's winning but slightly better and I believe the A4 pawn dies. However, it can be traded probably for the D3 pawn. So this is what uh, Mikhail Batvinik didn't find in the game. He played uh, rook g3, and then I don't know what happened, actually. I, I, in a few moves, they just agreed to draw. So that's why I'm not going to show it. Uh, but um, let's go back and try to understand uh, the idea. So I think the key moment was when he played uh, b4 with the idea to restrict pawns. And finally, uh, white was able to get this position where this knight has to... No, in this position. The knight has to uh, stay on the edge of the board, but at the same time he keeps two black pieces totally undeveloped. And then I think a better option was to play d4. So here everything is fine. b2, f3, six. And then instead of queen b2, I think d4 was a good move, after which um, uh, white is better. And uh, I don't know why Botvinnik didn't find it. I believe he, is, he was really strong. And uh, well, maybe probably he had a lack of time i just don't know the explanation maybe he decided not to open the position because so uh, black has a bishop pair and uh, finally these two bishops can work together but no right now it looks fine okay so here the task was to restrict pawns and to tie down the enemy pieces to their positions to protect the weaknesses and um, the last game I'm going to show you is a game fragment. Oh, actually, we're going to analyze only the end game of the game played between Alexander Elikin and Savieli Tartakover. So some people, uh, when they pronounce Elikin uh, second name, they say Alekain. So I don't know how to say it properly. But uh, in uh, Russian, it sounds like Alekhin or Alekhin uh, two ways. So that's why I say Alekhin, like, like it's written. However, uh, he was a Russian master and then uh, he immigrated to France and played for France. So this is the position. Here you may notice the bishop on b1 is real restricted it's black to move uh, but uh, the problem is that uh, white has a passed pawn on d6 however this pawn can be also a, a weakness in future what can you suggest in this position for black
okay okay so so sorry just uh, remind me to set coordinates because um, <laughs> so uh, 96 means uh, probably 93 93 uh -huh. rook c4 then 93 okay another suggestions any other ideas here Oh, okay let's let's go through oh, if we play this move for example then maybe g7 can be played uh, d7 rook c8 yeah uh, instead we may try this move but i actually don't like this move because now he has two pawns connected uh, let's analyze if we can take one of them rook d4 looks like not because if only we play this move then d7 immediately a rook goes back and then after c5 we lose the game uh, c6 c7 is unavoidable but 93 immediately makes sense we attack two rooks simultaneously what can he do well, he should take on c5 this is the only move then we take on d1 and if now if now he plays this move then after 90 i was uh i wanted to say this move 93 but it looks like it's not required just rook d6 and we are one pawn up with a good past pawn and with a good knight against this poor bishop so rook c6 instead of rook c1 to protect on d6 and to put some pressure on a6 pawn how to continue then Knight c3, yeah, knight c3, that's right. Knight c3, the bishop is hanging, it has to move. And then the idea is knight e2, because uh, this after this check, we play knight d4 and uh, deliver a fork. That's why rook has no time to capture on a6, it has to go back. And then we just take on d6, for example. No, king e3, then we can move the knight back and play with extra pawn. But um, uh, I also analyzed that this rook and game is absolutely winning after rook d3 king e2 or king e2 he loses on uh, g3 so that's why king f2 and then uh rook c3 he can't take because we promote i'll show you king f7 so he can't play this move because then e3 and if he goes to e2 then c2 if he goes to c2 then e2 so here we just activate the king and win because of the extra pawn uh that's why to trade was a bad idea if he does this move then of course e3 and uh, we win the game immediately so actually he has only two options to keep his rook bad on e2 or b2 after uh, what we can activate our, our king to d5 or to trade and lose this pawn in game yeah this so yeah this is called okay king king it no, yeah this is called a floating square true uh when uh he goes to capture the other pawn but we play with this pawn uh -huh. before playing rook c3 here what if e3 immediately king e2 it's a draw because if we play rook c3 he takes and then takes on e3 and now he catches the pawn and we lose that's why we shouldn't play this move instead we can just uh play uh, d2 he takes 
No, 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 no. Okay, instead we should just move our rook back to the sixth rank and then uh, the position becomes equal. So. Okay, well, let's go back. So here we could exploit our uh, knight advantage against the bishop because of um, knight's ability to maneuver and bad position of the bishop that was restricted by the e4 pawn. So that was a good idea to advance the pawn I think from e5 to e4 to block this bishop. Okay, fine. So now I want you to... Uh, summarize and uh, repeat the cases when knight is better than a bishop so what are they Okay. So knight better than bishop when position is blocked, uh, means closed position, true. When there are tactics, uh, when the bishops can be restricted, yeah, when the bishops are bad. Uh huh. So uh, what else? Uh, the knight can be better than the bishop, especially if the knight is located in the strong point or works like outpost. Uh huh, true. I see. And um, mm -hmm. uh, together, queen and knight are usually are better. Yes. So, yeah, this is what voters suggest. Queen plus knight is better in a picking position than queen and bishop. Of course, everything depends on the king uh, position. If the king is weak, then even you can checkmate it with queen and bishop. But in... Uh, in most cases, uh, queen and knight are better. So show us queen and knight combination. I'm not sure that I can do it right now, uh, but uh, maybe uh, on some of our next webinars, I will. Well, uh, let me just quickly check, maybe I can. No, okay. So next time, I'll do it next time. Yeah, yeah. So the idea is that the knight can uh, attack many different squares, while the bishop only attacks the squares of one color. Okay, so that's uh, all for our today's webinar. I just want to uh, remind you that next week I'm going to start our online tournament. So it's a classical tournament. Uh, if you want to, if you want to join it, you should be you should be below 1800 with feeder rating. Click this form. Also join our Tricks of Chess group. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And finally, by the end of the webinar, you will be redirected to this page. If you want to donate, you should you may click here, become a patron. Uh, but of course, these webinars are free. It's um, only if you want. Thank you for your attention. Uh, waiting you on the next webinar. The pairings will be ready tomorrow on Monday.